Okay, so in the previous video, we described how to find the directional derivative of a function of two variables f of x comma y domain subset of R2 at a point x0, y0 in the direction of a unit vector in terms of the graph of the function z is f of x comma y. And what is the idea? Well, I'll just quickly recap the idea. So, you started with the graph. You had this kind of picture of the graph, a surface type of thing. You intersect it with the plane. What plane did we pick? Well, we picked the plane, which when you just look at the intersection with the xy plane, that's this line which passes through the point x0, y0 and is in the direction of the unit vector uv. Okay, so we intersect the graph with this plane. Now we coordinatize the plane. How did we coordinatize the plane? What did we take as the origin? Well, we took as the origin this point, x0, y0, 0. And we took as the unit vector in this direction, the unit vector. Okay. And then we looked at the intersection of this plane with the graph, which would be some picture in this plane. Okay. It will be some picture like. Okay. Some picture like that. And we, we chosen it so that this point x0, y0, 0 is the origin here and the unit vector here in this direction is just uv0. Okay. And now we just look at the slope of this tangent line and that gives you the directional derivative. Okay. Okay. So that was what we did last time. Uh, I didn't make the picture last time, but that's, I didn't make this, I didn't make this picture last time, but that's the idea. Okay, now what's the gradient vector? How do you define the gradient vector? You know how to define the gradient vector? Hmm? Not too sure. Well, you know it's it's more work than it's worth. But wh what's the kind of idea behind defining the gradient vector? You have to go back and use the epsilon delta definition. Right? Because the gradient vector is the notion of derivative. You want to define it as a limit of a difference quotient. But you cannot do that because you are with vectors. So you have to go back to the epsilon delta definition. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. Which we don't want to do. But there's one nice thing about the gradient vector which we can use here. And what's that? That's the relation between the gradient vector and directional derivative. So what's the relation? What's the directional derivative? The dot product of uv, vector uv. Is the gradient vector. Okay. What that's saying is that, uh, that the, the direction derivative in a direction is determined by essentially how close that direction is to the gradient vector direction and by the magnitude of the gradient vector. So far, so good. Hmm? Okay. Now, what I'm going to say is this. If the gradient vector exists, then something remarkable happens. Well, the gradient vector usually does exist, so you may not think of this as very remarkable. But it's something interesting. So, for every direction, the directional derivative has to exist, if the gradient vector exists, right? Because this equality goes sort of this way. Whenever the right side exists, so does the left side. Hmm? Okay. okay? So if the gradient vector exists, then all directional derivatives exist. Now for every direction, you have, you can compute the direction derivative and in the process you get this line, this tangent line, right? And now you rotate, now you rotate this plane, that is you change the unit vector direction, at, but keep the point the same, okay? So you rotate the plane and you get different tangent lines, all passing through the point x0, y0, fx0, y0. So you get different tangent lines and if the gradient vector exists, then all these form a what? Tangent plane. Form, they form a plane and that plane is called the tangent plane. And I'll write the equation of this tangent plane in two ways. First is I'll write the conceptual way. Here's what it says. It says z minus f of x0, y0 is f of x. 
well that's that's the second way actually I want to write. so the first way is I just want to write it as uh, nabla f of x that's the gradient vector dot with the vector difference between x y and x not y not okay so this is a vector x minus x not comma y minus y not this is a this is a vector both in two dimensions I take the dot product that's a number and I'm claiming that z if z minus that should be that number so this actually if you work it out it gives you this equation Yeah, that's the first coordinate of nabla. What's the second thing? F sub y. Is this all coming? Yeah. X now, why not? Times y minus one. So did you get this? So the, the, there's a vector definition which says z minus fx not y not is the gradient vector dot with the difference. Okay? And there's this sort of more explicit version. Now, first of all, the vector version, do you see how this is similar to function of one variable? If you had y equals fx, you'd get y minus fx naught is f prime x naught times x minus x naught. Right? So instead of y, you have z. Instead of fx naught, you have fx naught y naught. Instead of f prime x naught, you have the gradient vector, which is the vector version of derivative. Instead of x minus x naught, you have xy minus x naught y naught. So, so the main interesting change is you change that ordinary multiplication into dot product here. Otherwise, it's, it's exactly the same as with functions of one variable. Okay. And this latter one is just making this explicit because, you know, the coordinates of the grain vector are just fx and fy. So now I want to draw attention to a couple of subtle points. The first is that the tangent lines need not form a plane if the gradient vector doesn't exist. Okay? Okay, so what would be an example of that? Well, it's a little hard to write down explicitly, I mean, off the top of my head, and it'll be a little complicated to explain. But the idea is you can imagine you sort of, the directional derivatives, remember, the behavior in different directions doesn't really have to be related to each other. So you can imagine sort of a paper which folds in and out and in, in all sorts of weird ways, and, and sort of the tangent lines don't form planes, right? So, if you're not assuming differentiable, the directions really don't have to have any relation with each other. Okay, so you could sort of pictorially imagine something. Okay, the second problem is that tangent lines may form a plane, but the gradient vector may still not exist. Is this here? In which case, you won't actually want to call this the tangent plane. So this is related to the fact that you can have a situation where all the directional derivatives exist and the gradient vector doesn't exist. So it's the same fact, basically. Sorry, all the directional derivatives exist and they sort of, they, they are consistent with each other. And still the gradient vector doesn't exist. So, so you can have a situation, for instance, where all the directional derivatives are zero at a point, but the gradient vector is not zero. So you sort of expect that you have this tangent plane, which is just horizontal, right? But that's not actually a tangent plane because the function isn't actually differentiable. The gradient vector doesn't actually exist. So in that case, we don't call that plane the tangent plane. It exists as a plane, but it's not really the tangent plane. So existence of the gradient vector is equivalent to existence of the tangent plane. 
and the tangent plane is given in terms of the gradient vector. How is it given? Like this. Okay. So, so you can sort of see now that if the function is differentiable, then the surface you get as the graph of the function is sort of smooth in some sense because at every point you are able to get tangent planes. Okay. You see that? Yeah. Okay. 